ambition mean to you? Uh, I think for, for me, ambition is about having a goal and being driven, motivated to achieve that goal. Uh, I think there's a lot of people who might have drive or feel like they can achieve something, but they're achieving someone else's goals or achieving someone else's dreams. And I think ambition needs to be kind of driven towards your own dreams as well. You need to have both the goal and the motivation. So for me, it's it's having the vision and the uh, the, the 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 vision and the, the goals there, but also the ambition to achieve that. So, are you ambitious? Uh, I think so. I mean, I think so. I think I, I it's it's really hard. I, I work in a business school, or I've got a business background, but I I kind of rail against the business world a little bit in my work. You know, I'm not ambitious in the idea of I want to earn more money, I want to have an empire, or anything like that. But I think you can be ambitious towards multiple ways. So. I, I love helping people, I love working with people, I love working with community groups who might not get the support that they, they would otherwise enjoy if they were a profit organization and so I'm ambitious towards helping them grow and be better and hopefully give them some skills that maybe they wouldn't have access to otherwise. So I think I'm ambitious that way but not maybe in a neoliberal sense. So why do you think you're this way? Where does that come from? Uh, I, I think there's a couple of things, and I've been thinking about this a lot over the last 10-15 years, I think, you know, maybe a bit too much for someone of uh, someone who's in their early 40s, but, um, so my grandfather, my paternal grandfather, was the first person in his family to, to learn how to read and write, uh, so, uh, you know, in two generations you have a professor now uh, that's, that's working in a university teaching people. Um, uh, my grandfather used his privilege of being able to read and write to, to give back to his community. So he opened up a school in his village so other kids didn't have to worry about literacy. He opened up a, a high school in the local town so that girls could go to school because at the time in India, girls weren't allowed to learn uh, and things like that. So I, we already have that, whether it's in the genetics or whether it's just the culture, that if you get something, if you have something, you, you use that to help someone else. And so uh, that's really important to me, that we, we give back with what we have. So. Um, we were always instilled that into in our family values as well with my father he was like right if you learn something you have something then you share it you know it's as simple as that and so ambition for me is not just about how can I be better but how can we be better so that we can share this around with other people so I also see a lot of people uh, who are working very very long hard hours uh, paying taxes um, for the privilege that I have I'm a public servant I work at a university primarily funded by the taxpayer and so when I see someone in the hot sun digging up a road who is probably earning far less than me and paying tax to allow me the privilege that I have then I have to respect that. I, I got to use that money to the fullest I think so if I'm not then that's a little bit offensive to me uh, and, and so I get maybe I get offended a little too easily with inefficiency or get a little offended too easy by laziness uh, especially when you're a public servant so I hope I don't become that person so I'm a little ambitious that way. If I were to ask you who's the most ambitious person you know, not necessarily personally, just what pops into your head when I say that? The most ambitious person I know, I would say that's probably the biggest risk taker, the person that keeps driving forward. Um, I honestly don't know. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I can't tell you. Uh, I, there's just so many people. I love people that break boundaries. I love people that are willing to give something a go without necessarily feeling like there's something in the way. So um, politics aside, I like Chloe Swarbrick. Uh, she's ambitious as a young female leader who's quite happy to speak out against what are institutional biases, I think, against many young people in New Zealand. Uh, I also like that she's not hindered by what she feels might be political lines or something like that. She's quite happy to speak her mind and her party allows that. Uh, so I see her probably being a Prime Minister at some point. I, I don't know when that'll be, whether it'll be within the next five years, 20 years, 50 years, but I, I see she's got plenty of time ahead of her. Uh, I, I like the ambition that we see uh, on the international scale as well. Obviously there are people who will say it'll never happen, you're never going to have a female president of colour in the US, and I love that Kamala Harris is, is breaking those boundaries, you know? And I know there's a lot going on in the background that achieves that, but someone still has to step up and, and uh, say, yeah, I'm willing to put myself out there. I did see this great uh, post on social media 
that every Indian parent is now looking at their own kids thinking, why couldn't you be vice president? You know, why, why aren't you doing that hard? So that's very much, you know, what we're feeling as well as the Indian community. Like, yes, awesome, but that's made our lives difficult as well because now we can apparently achieve this as well. So it's great that we have uh, people who are role models that way. So uh, I don't know either of those people personally. I've had a couple of short conversations with Clovis Warbrick, but um, those are characters. I think there are people uh, throughout history as well who I see as very ambitious, and I'm quite happy to, to say, yep, yeah, there's elements of people that I find really inspiring, but I don't know if there's a whole person who I'd go, yep, yeah, that's who I want to be. I, I, think that's, I think that's a bit problematic when people say, I want to be the next Nelson Mandela, or I want to be the next... Gandhi or something. I mean, be the first you, and then take elements of those people to 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 make you a little bit more refined and better. But so you've spent time in New Zealand, and have you spent time in India as well? Yep. So so I've um, I've never lived in India for more than maybe about three or four months at a time. So I was born in the UK, moved to New Zealand when I was fifteen, and kind of bounced between the UK and New Zealand. But half my life has been in New Zealand, half my life has been in the UK by now. Um, so do you, do you notice any differences across those places in terms of how people perceive ambition, how they act about ambition, how they talk about ambition? Yeah, sure. So um, I think the goals are different in each country. Uh, so in the UK, I find uh, when I was there last anyway in the, the mid to late 2000s, uh, there was a lot more individualism. How can I take care of me? How can I take care of my family? How can I earn enough money to support my family? In New Zealand, I find the the attitude and the goals are very much, um, how can I have the best life possible? That can be how can I earn the most money, but also how can I enjoy the outdoors? How can I have the lifestyle I want? How can I do that? So uh, there's a little bit of a balance there. In India, it is very much how can I survive? How can I make it through today? How can I make it through tomorrow? How can I make my kids' life a little easier? Uh, so when we, uh, when we put out a job ad here, we might get 50 people apply for a job uh, to work with us. Uh, if I was in India, I'd get 500, 5,000 people apply for a job. So the competition is much, much higher as a result. Uh, and um, going forward, that means that you really have to excel if you want to achieve those higher levels. That means that the, the pressure in India is much, much higher. So almost it's not necessarily ambition, but it's forced onto you because otherwise there's no uh, a way to a way to survive any other way. In the UK, I think it's still... There's levels of ambition, but it is not necessarily ambition to have a, a balanced life. It's ambition to accumulate, grow, wealth-driven, whatever else it might be. And, and so that didn't really sit well with us. We, I remember one Christmas, there was one of those uh, uh, systems, you know how you put in five pounds a, a week or ten pounds a week, and at Christmas you get this big hamper. So late November, this company went bust. And so something like... Uh, 100,000 people lost all their Christmas savings that, that they had put together for this. And our, uh, my wife and I remember reading the newspaper and reading, watching the news and people saying, no one helped me, so why should I help these people? No one helped me. Well, and I'm like, that's a really sucky attitude, you know. Uh, while in New Zealand we see people who hurt and we see people who are in pain, and I don't think it's as callous. Uh, um, there's definitely still elements of that, and I think it's becoming more that way, especially post-COVID and as we head into another global recession, there's going to be people who are hurting, uh, but there always seems to be an opportunity to help someone else and people willing to help those people. So that's, uh, I like that. So finding that balance, it's not just about money, but it's also about what your life could be. Is there anything else you'd like to say about ambition before we wrap this up? I don't know if ambition is something that can be learnt. I don't know if ambition is something that can be uh, uh, it's like taught in schools. I do think that ambition is something that maybe is part of who you are. And there are going to be some people that are more easily motivated or there are going to be people who are more easily able to see the, the, the goals that they have and they want to aim for those goals. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't refine those things. So someone who maybe lacks a little motivation, you give them tools to uh, you know, keep them motivated. At the same time, someone who doesn't naturally see goals and vision and strategy, they, you can give them tools to help them understand goals, strategy, and the like. Um, but there's going to be some people who naturally get it, and I think that's important. That There's going to be some people who naturally understand it, uh, and we should support those people as well, and just enhance that even more. So there are always going to be ambitious people, but I think there's going to be some people who naturally are there, and we can refine that even further. 
those people who maybe are not ambitious, we still need them in society. We still need those people uh, who are quite happy to, to, to satisfy uh, and, and live their life, but to really elevate, I think, and especially to go beyond what you've been given in life. There, there needs to be a little bit of ambition in order to, to raise, the, raise you up. I mean, my grandfather saw that with education. We're seeing that now with education here in the university level. Uh, we see that with health, when people have access to uh, effective and cheap health care, uh, then, then that can make life easier for a lot of people. So how do we enhance these things to allow people to be ambitious in other ways? So take away all those things that might hold someone back, elevate them up, and I think that allows ambition to thrive.